All right, guys, we just rolled into today's project, and yes, we're going to try out the new, new to me, Fecon Vulture. All right, so while the tractor's warming up there a little bit, let me kind of show you what uh, what we got going on. So that is the brush pile that we burnt in the snow a handful of videos back. Uh, I guess it's been well over a month ago. Look at it, it's still, still smoking down there. As I mentioned in that video, uh, there's several other videos of clearing this land here. So what we want to do now is this section of land here, he does not want to take out all of the big trees. He just wants to thin out all the underbrush like this stuff you see here in front of us so that's kind of what we're hoping to do is uh he's calling it a transitional area he wants the uh animals to have a little bit of a transitional area into his food plot over there so they kind of see through the bigger trees but still have some protection i'm not a hunter i don't know how it works i just uh do what i ask do what i am asked and that's the plan for the day so what we're gonna do is uh fire the old girl up and start kind of uh, chewing our way down through there i'm thinking this mulcher is going to work pretty good for this because um we don't want to disturb any of the existing trees we want to leave a lot of that uh a lot of that standing and uh hopefully we'll get this chewed up enough and we can leave it and the top's all on top so he can still get a, a good stand of grass down there in the bottom so basically the goal is anything six inches or less he wants gone so I'm thinking we just uh, tie into it right here and uh, see what she's got. So I'm hoping the old case tractor's got enough oomph to run this thing. But there is uh, only one way to find out. I think it's heavy now. Heavy, 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 I tell you. All right, find a gear. That's a forward gear. That's a slow one. Let's go a little faster. the PTO.
All right, guys, don't judge me. That's my first hour ever running a brush mulcher. And uh, boy, did I learn a lot in a hurry. But uh, I think I'm slowly kind of getting the hang of it. Uh, covered quite a bit of ground here in about an hour. Pretty impressed with the uh, job it's doing. Now that the teeth are shined up a little bit, I do think I have a few teeth that may need to be replaced. But for the most part, they're in uh, plenty good enough shape to keep going with what we got here. I did take down some... Um, I think you guys see me chew up one probably an eight or ten inch tree the tractor uh the tractor horsepower wise i think it's pretty close to enough it's got enough pto power to uh slip the clutch on the machine so i think they're pretty evenly matched where i lack a little bit is in traction and maneuverability but I think it's gonna do what I need it to do. So that is definitely a plus. But before I go any farther, I do want to make a few adjustments to this thing. Now that I've ran it for a little bit, uh, a couple things going on. One, we're gonna blame this on Aaron, man behind the scenes since he's not here. Somebody forgot to put a keeper in that pen. It is coming out. And two, I don't know if you guys can see, I'm having a hard time getting the stuff to feed in from the front side. So my process has kind of been, is I keep it uh, maybe five to six inches off the ground, I go backwards, mow everything down. I was a little bit worried about the stumps and the stubble getting into the tires, but it seems to bust them up and splinter them enough that uh, there's not really enough left to get up into a tire. You kind of see that, it's just all frayed. It's all frayed up. Um, if it's a decent sized tree I'm worried about I'll immediately pull back forward lower it down a little bit go over the stump so I don't have to worry about it uh, causing a tire problem um, but basically I'll back down the hill knock everything down chew it up and come back up the hill and kind of mulch it up now what my plan is I think I'm going to do that process over the whole area and then once I get the whole area done I may just drive forward back and forth the opposite way and uh, mulch everything up. That's kind of what I did here. It seemed to break it up pretty good. So far guys, so far I'm pretty impressed with it. If I was going to be in the mulching business, um, I definitely want a skid steer mounted one just simply for the work to be in front of me instead of behind me. I've never ran a skid steer mounted one, but I think the drum recovery speed is quite a bit faster on this and it's got a lot more torque coming with the direct drive off the PTO, uh, not fighting the, the hydraulic lag there. Uh, tractor seems to be handling it fine. It's not getting hot, not doing anything crazy like that. Just kind of trying to be real careful about uh, not uh, getting anything up underneath the tractor. We don't need to get underneath the tractor. Tractor don't have skid pans on it like a skid steer would. That's one thing that worries me just a little bit. But uh, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get that pin back in. I'm gonna lengthen that top link right there which should roll this back which in return should allow a larger feed area on the front i kind of adjusted it down pretty tight when i started because i didn't know any better and i wanted to make sure i wasn't throwing a bunch of debris back at me and uh there's been a few small particles that come by but nothing that's really concerned me um you know part of me thinks it'd be nice to have a cab tractor and then the other part of me thinks you know what i'm kind of glad we don't because I'm afraid I'd knock a window out of it doing this. But uh, let's make some adjustments and go at it again. All right, a few minor adjustments. Let's try it again.
guys, things were going great. Things were going awesome. This thing's working amazing. Tractor's running good. Beautiful day. I mean, what more could a guy ask for? Until I backed in a hole. Yeah, it's a little deeper than I thought. And uh, four wheel drive on this tractor, well, it works when it want to, wants to, and then whenever you actually need it, it's like, eh, hey, I'm gonna take vacation for a little while. I think it's working. So what happened was, is I backed down the hill too far, and the bottom of that ditch was softer than what I anticipated. The mulcher dug into the bank over here. So what I'm gonna try to do is I actually uh, shortened up that top link as much as I could, trying to get that rolled up a little bit. I don't know. It may or may not work. But uh, I'm gonna try to uh, maneuver my way out of here with that. I'm hoping I can lift it up enough that maybe that back tire will grab that log right there and take me on out backwards. If not, I don't have any other equipment here. If not, I may go get a chain and chain that bucket to that tree and see if I can use the bucket by raising and curling. See if I can use the bucket to get myself out of there. So. I don't know. Attempt one. Let's see what happens. We got out of the original hole and started to climb up on the bank there, but at the same time I climbed up on the bank, the other tire's going down the hole. I guess we'll consider this progress. I just wanted to get off and kind of uh, evaluate the situation here and make sure we're not going to run over a stick or run over something that's going to uh, damage the tractor. We was able to get those trees knocked over. I think we're good down there. I think if we can get back another six or seven feet, hoping I get my front end turned over and maybe drive down through there. Sounds like a good plan, right? All right, let's try.
Good news. We're out. I don't think we damaged anything. I think everything's in good shape. But let's put that on the uh, do not attempt to try again list. I think we need to put a little bit of air in that top before we keep on going. So I'm going to uh, call that a good stop point for lunch. I'm going to go grab me some lunch. Grab a little air for this tire. And uh, we'll come back and try this again. All right, we are back from lunch. The first thing we're gonna do, I believe, is put a little bit of air in that tire. I got this fancy little DeWalt inflator. I've had this thing for a while. Actually, <laughs> this is this is the second one because uh, Captain Cleman possibly destroyed the first one, but I do like this thing. Got the valve stem up to the top. It's got 16 pounds of air pressure in it. The tire requires 25 to 30, so we'll go 27. We'll go right there in the middle. Hit the start button. Away she goes. So obviously that's a little bitty old girl and it's gonna take a minute to air that up. But while it's doing that, I need to lengthen that top length back out. I uh, tightened it up to roll that thing forward. <laughs> Try to get myself out of the ditch down there. So let's get this thing reconfigured. All right, guys, got the tire aired up. That all went well, but here's my next problem is this thing's got a tremendous amount of tension on it. I was in the ditch down there. This was being held up. I was able to really get that thing cranked down to do what I needed to to get her lifted up and got it up out of there. But uh, now I can't get it to go down low enough. That's got tension on it. I could probably put a pipe wrench on here, maybe crank on it, but uh, I got a better plan. I'm not gonna put it back in the ditch because that wouldn't make any sense, but I think if I take this tree pusher and nudge it up against that tree. Maybe I can get her to cock forward just enough. We can start to get her, uh, start getting her adjusted. So let's uh, let's see what happens. The trick is going to be to get it pushed back there, and hold just enough tension on it with the parking brake. Come on, tractor. Tractor. I'm beginning to remember why it's been parked in the barn all these years. It's got electronic shuttle shift on it. <clears throat> it is always mad at you about something. I don't know what it's doing. It's got an attitude problem. It does handle the motor pretty well though. For uh, being a little undersized, but I can't complain about uh, how it does with that. Got us out of the ditch. All right, let's see if we get just enough tension on that to start. Come on, baby. Well, that's gonna work or not. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave it all the way down. Where it would work better if I raised it up a little bit. Get it off the ground. Let's try that. Oh, there we go, I see it come loose. Don't. Don't move. Oh yes, look at that. Perfect. Now I'm just gonna have to go back and forth about six or seven times. Oh yeah, look at that. Got it. I think we're officially back in business. All right, so this is gonna be my plan of attack now that I'm back going again. I think I'm gonna stay away from the, stay away from the ditch for a little while. We got pretty much the upper half of this done. We got a little bit of a swell or a ditch right here, and this is gonna be kind of the defining line of where we're gonna quit and where we're gonna keep going. 
So I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to come in here and kind of get this tidied up a little bit. Get a good straight line going down that ditch and tie into where we've been at over there. And hopefully once I get that opened up, I can go back and forth this way. We can kind of smooth everything over a little bit. So hammer time. Let's do it. guys my battery died there I had to go to the truck and get another one but check this out I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out I ended up going back across it the other way with the mulching door closed and uh, I like it I like it a lot I definitely think that will work for what the uh, customer is after which is the main thing the uh, I've never ran one on a skid steer so I don't have an honest opinion I'm sure some of you guys have I would say the skid steer mallet one probably has an advantage taking trees down and hitting little random corners and stuff. I tracked her so long, especially with that front end loader on there, it's just hard to maneuver around some of these trees. Uh, but I do think from what I've seen, once the tree's on the ground, that thing will eat it. It is not shy of chewing it up. Even with that 75 horse tractor, it uh, does a pretty good job of uh, pretty good job of chewing the tree up. So. I uh, I think we're done here, guys. I like it. I like it a lot. Definitely opened it up, connected that semi food plot to this actual food plot. The uh, homeowner's actually got a tractor himself. He's going to come down here and uh, finish disposing of that pile and uh, probably touch this up a little bit. He just wanted the main stuff done. But we can't we can't leave here without putting this thing to the test and seeing how big a tree we can actually take down so i think this is a box elder tree don't hold me to it uh i don't have a tape measure on me but it, going off my foot it's probably 12 to 14 inches in diameter i'm pretty sure if i can get the rotating drum to the tree it'll eat it the issue may be traction and lack of full wheel drive <laughs> this is where a skid steer one would be mounted skid steer mounted one would be nice because you can just come in there whatever angle you want probably catch it up high and grab the uh grab the stump down but uh Let's see what happens, guys. I think we can get her. So we want to find out.
Well, guys, we got her down, and we're gonna chew her up with these. I wanna show you guys something real quick. So this is the very first GoPro 7 that I ever bought. I've had this thing since I started doing YouTube, and I keep it around uh, just for crazy shots like we're getting now. And it's been ran over by a roller. It's on YouTube. It's been through a brush hog and lost over the hill for uh, two months and fell with a metal detector. Uh, I don't know how many times it's fell off going down the road. And then today, as you guys probably already seen, I ain't watched the video, took a direct hit in the lens. Luckily I had another one. I'm not sponsored by GoPro. I'm not like saying GoPro is the best camera out there. And I've had some junk GoPros. My GoPro 9 is absolutely useless. I'm recording on a GoPro 8 right now. But this little GoPro 7 right here will not die. And it has gave you guys some awesome countless shots over the years. And for the looks of it, it's going to live to live to record another day. So I'm going to finish, uh, finish chewing this tree up here real quick. We're going to park the top of the hill. We're going to call this job a wrap. Well, guys, I believe that's going to be a wrap on this one. So uh, from here, the homeowner will take it. And uh, I don't think he's wanting to like make this yard by any stretch of the imagination. I think he's just wanting to be able to get across here with a little brush hog about twice a year. Keep all the saplings and stuff down and uh, kind of open everything up. And I believe we believe we accomplished that. So I guess kind of in recap here, I am actually thoroughly impressed with the Fecon Mulcher. It seems to do very well. And uh, for being an older used unit, it could use a few new teeth on it, but the bearings seem to be good. The drive system seems to be good. Uh, slip clutch seems to be adjusted just about right. Didn't really have any issues with it at all. Now, on the other hand, this poor tractor. I don't even know where to start on this thing. So we bought this tractor and everybody say we, mostly my grandpa, he bought this tractor brand new probably 10 years ago uh, for the family farm or his farm. And uh, we've had problems with it since day one. I think it's got 1600 hours on it. And full disclosure, Grandpa was not the easiest on stuff. So that's why the front grill is busted out of it. And a lot of the lights and stuff were knocked off of it. That was from him doing his stuff. But stuff that's not his fault, for some reason, ever since this tractor was new, it's got electronic shuttle shift on it. And it does not, does not work right. We just had it at the dealer. I guess it's about two years ago we had it at the dealer. They put a whole new transmission controller on it. And this is honestly the first time it's been used since we've got it back. And it's worse, it don't, uh, every time you go from forward or reverse, it wants you to put it in neutral or cycle the pedal or take it in and out of gear. It's got like, I call it a combination. You gotta type, type the combination in to get it to work. Uh, four wheel drive quit working. And then for some reason, the PTO cable, it engages the PTO quit working. So here towards the end, I actually had to do it with a pair of ice cream. So tractor needs to go back to the shop, get some maintenance on it. But it's a 75 horse tractor. Uh, I wouldn't want anything any smaller at all, but actually the size of the tractor, it did pretty well with this thing. It had enough power. Uh, whenever I did get it bound up a few times, it slipped the clutch. It did end up eventually killing the engine. But uh, honestly, sometimes more power is not more better because you just tear stuff up. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with the way it handled it as far as the weight on the back of the tractor and the actual horsepower to turn it. It's just the knickknacks on it that, uh, drive me absolutely berserk so anyways guys that's gonna be a wrap on this one don't forget to like subscribe and comment and as always we'll catch you on the next one